Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Wreath, uh, the Wreath Network on TriHackMe. Today we're going to do task 5, but first just a little bit of setup. So you may notice this looks a little bit different than the first video over the introductory tasks. I have moved to a new virtual machine. This is a fresh install, for the most part, of uh, Kali 2021.1, I think. Um, now, all I've done other than getting this uh, download performed is I've upped the uh, size of the page, just uh, zoomed in on the uh, Firefox to make it easier for everyone to read. I've updated it, and then I've changed the font on the terminal to make it easier to read. Everything else is fresh, and I'm going to go through how to get connected using the uh, my own Kali machine, which is what I do recommend doing. After the last video, I spoke with the network's author, uh, Mirland Oracle, and uh, one of the room testers, Tim Taylor, and they both recommended that I move to doing this specifically within um, my own standalone virtual machine, specifically because the steps with the Empire currently do not work with the attack box. If you can, I highly recommend doing this in your own virtual machine, and I'm going to show how to do that now. You can do this on a pretty underpowered Kali instance. It might take a little bit longer to get some of these tasks done. Uh, however, you can shrink this down quite a bit to make it work. That being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to go ahead and get this all set up. So the first thing that we'll need to do here, I'll close that and we can go to it again. We can go over here to access. I'm going to middle click to open it up in a new tab. And then I need to download the wreath uh, network configuration. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll try downloading it. I might have to reconfigure it. And you can see that it's taken this uh, format of my username and then wreath dot or dash wreath dot open VPN. And now all I'm going to do is I am going to make a directory called wreath and then we'll move uh, from downloads uh, the my open VPN file. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger into the wreath folder and then we'll go ahead and move into wreath and I'm going to shirt a new tmux session. So tmux new dash s for the session name and I'm just going to name mine wreath. Uh, a lot of times I'll name it working. However, we can see now that we're running in uh, tmux. This is a lot easier. I find it just easier to run the VPN config out of this. Um, let's go ahead and we'll get connected sudo su uh, because I want to be running openvpn as root that skull in the uh, <laughs> the command prompt is a nice little touch there I haven't used the new zsh version of Kali so that's kind of neat uh, this is right after they transferred uh, or transitioned from bash being the main shell uh, to zsh specifically because of a weird licensing issue I don't know the full specifics but it's uh, this is the new version of Kali um, we can go ahead and launch openvpn by going to, I think it's just going to be dash C. Uh, here, we can check on this task. sudo open VPN and then the config name. And there we go. We'll see that this will go ahead and start up in just a moment. I'm going to go and do control B and C to open up a new tab. And I'll name this one working as we're actually going to be doing our work in it. Cool. So we've gone ahead and connected. I will make sure that that connects in just a second. Uh, and it looks like it did set that. So we can go ahead and move into task five, web server enumeration. First, I'm going to go ahead and it looks like the wreath network is stopped. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and we'll start reading this while this is going. Now note again, when we turn off the wreath network or if it closes down, that does not reset the network that only turns everything off. So anything that we leave on the machine, so for example, if I leave a reverse shell, that's uh, something that'll still be on the machine. All right, task five, enumeration. As with any attack, we first begin with the enumeration phase. Completing the nmap room, if you haven't already, will help with this section. Thomas gave us an IP to work with, shown on the network panel at the top of this page. Let's, per or let's start by performing a port scan of the first 15,000 ports of this IP. Uh, note here and in general, it's good to save your scan results to a file so you don't have to rerun the same scan twice. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and run that port scan. I will bring this back up and I'm going to switch to root because sometimes Cal or, uh, Nmap just doesn't like to 
run properly. And let's confirm that I can ping this. Okay, I can see it through my terminal. 10, 200, 72, 200. And I might have to reconfigure my file or regenerate my file rather. I will go ahead and take care of that. And when we're back, I will be all connected. All right, we're back. All I had to do was regenerate my configuration file. So I just went to the access page again and clicked regenerate and then waited 10 seconds. And after redownloading it, it fixed my access. Nice and easy. So I'll go ahead and close that and then we can continue on. So we want to scan the first 15,000 ports. We can do that with nmap. Uh, we will do dash p uh, dash p one through 15,000 just because we want to scan everything uh, in that specific range. Actually, we want, yeah, we'll do one through 15,000. Technically, zero is a port. It is a restricted port number. And if you ever see something running on port zero, it shouldn't be. Uh, a lot of malware actually likes to run on that. So it's just something to be aware of. I am also going to move to split screen to make it easier for you guys to read everything. Oh, <laughs> makes my network diagram really small, but oh well, that's fine. I will go ahead and launch that scan, and we'll see what we get. Now, note, I am also, real quick, going to save this to a file. I'm going to do this with OA uh, for output all formats, and I'm going to save it as uh, web uh, or external. External. And there we go, that'll output it as the grappable format, the nmap format, which is just what we get in the terminal anyways, and then as XML as well. Very useful, especially for reporting. I just output it as all formats, especially if it's not a large amount of hosts because it's the same difference. So I'll go ahead and launch that, and I'll pause the video. Once we're back, we'll take a look at the results. And we're back. So it looks like we have five ports that are open under... 15,000. That'll be the answer for the first one. Real quick, I do want to show the hint just because this had a little bit better syntax uh, for getting that range. I didn't know that you could just do dash um, 1500. I would imagine that this does the first 15,000 uh, ports rather. So show that real quick. And then we have five services open. Okay, we're going to double check. Hold on. Okay. I misinterpreted that very slightly. This port is technically closed, so it counts as uh, not supposed to be open. Uh, so it is going to be four uh, ports that are open on this host. All right. Uh, perform a service scan on these hosts. What operating system that does nmap think is running? We can do that with this. So we will grab just those ports. We're going to do 22, 80... 443 and 10,000 and then dash SV and we'll name this dash uh, service. We'll give that a go. Maybe. Oh, hold on. I need spaces. Let's give that a try. There we go. Here, one second. Let me go ahead and fix that. All right, we're back. As it turns out, I was correct about the spaces on this. I did not have a space between the 10,000 and the service version scan. Uh, so we can see that we've got the results back now, and it looks like in the headers for the web server, we are running CentOS. And we can put that in as our answer. Okay, we know what we're dealing with. Open the IP in your browser. What site does the server try to redirect you to? So we can take a look. And again, that's going to be 10, 200, 72, 200, uh, thomasreath.thm. So that's going to be HTTPS, thomasreath.thm. And we can go ahead and add that to our Etsy host file, which it looks like we're doing that next. You have noticed that the site failed to resolve. It looks like Thomas forgot to set up the DNS. Add to your host file manually. This can be accomplished by editing the Etsy host file on Linux or Mac OS, uh, which we're going to be doing here, or you can do this on Windows as well. So let's go ahead and nano Etsy host, and then 10, let's see, 200, 
uh, let me scroll up. 10, 200, 72, 200, and we can even see that this has lit up since we know what it is. Very cool. And then tab, and then we know that this is going to be thomasreath.thm. And there we go. Let's scroll back down. And we can do control X and then Y to save that change. And we'll mark that as completed. And then if we try going to this again, it's going to say that we have a potential security hazard like the self-signed cert. Um, yeah, self-signed cert that we see down there. We can go and accept the risk and continue. And <laughs> that is a wonderful picture, just straight up his face. Uh, that's nice. Uh, so it looks like this is his uh, portfolio or his resume website. Very common to see this done in IT. Reload the web page. It should now resolve, but it will give you a different error related to the D TLS certificate. This occurs because that box is not really connected to the internet, so it cannot have a signed TLS certificate. In this instance, it is safe to click advanced, accept risks. However, you should never do this in the real world. Uh, yeah, they, that's very much the case. You can have internal um, signed certificates. However, some IT departments don't necessarily go to the trouble of doing that. In this specific case, this is just an internal network. So this is acceptable. Otherwise, you don't want to do this, especially if you do not know what it is. In real life, we would perform a footprinting phase of the engagement at this point. This essentially involves finding as much public information about the target as possible and noting it down. You never know what could prove useful. More information is always better as long as it's organized. Read through the text at the, on the page. What is Thomas's mobile phone number? So it looks like, I think that was at the bottom with his contact information. Yeah, we can see that right here. Copy that. Here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for you guys to read as well. So you can see I've got his mobile phone number here. There we go. And note, I did have the plus at the start of that. Let's have a look at the highest port open. Look back at your service scan results. What server version does Nmap detect as running here? So I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up in my results. Looks like we have mini serve. So this is going to be webmin. Uh, so this will be mini serve 1.890. See if that takes webmin HTTPD. There we go. So full answer for that one. Put your answer to the last question into Google. Uh, it appears that this service is vulnerable to an unauthenticated, or unauthenticated rather, remote code execution exploit. What is the CV number for this exploit? Uh, so if you've done source in the attacker KB room, this is actually the same exploit that I talk about in that room. So definitely recommend checking that out. And I will try to remember to put that in the video description for this as well. If you want a little bit more of a thorough walkthrough for that. Uh, so we can go ahead and do, let's do webmin 1.890. I apologize, that's a little bit small. Uh, we can see that we have a page from webmin, which is talking about what happened. Uh, essentially, this was a backdoor that is in there. Yeah, backdoor that could allow anyone with knowledge of execute, uh, anyone with knowledge of it uh, could execute commands as root. Not good. Um, you can see that there are other versions as well that had this issue, but it was not exploitable in a default installation. That being said, we're not looking for that. We are looking for the CVE, and it looks like we've got that here. Um, We had it in the title. There we go. So we can grab this. We don't really need that right up of the exploit itself. And let's try that. There we go. Perfect. We have everything we need to break into this machine. So let's get going. And that's going to do it for this task. In the next video, we're going to go through task six, which is going to be the exploitation of this web machine. Otherwise, I will see you guys. If you're tuning in for the next video, I'll see you in just a moment. But until then, happy hacking.